Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm a first year radiology student. I actually just finished my first year in radiology school and today I'm just gonna be recapping on my first year of radiology school. All right, so let's just get right into it. So I had to write down a couple of things because I can't remember off the top of my head what we learned in Radiology 101. So I just wrote a couple of things down just to freshen my memory just in case if I forget. So if I keep looking at my notes, I apologize. So in your fall semester, for your procedures in positioning book, which is how you position the patient for certain x-rays. What we covered was chest, abdomen, upper extremities, lower extremities, and shoulder girdle. During clinical, chest x-rays are the most common thing that you will see that will probably be most likely your first comp. Um, my first comp was a portable chest x-ray due to um, COVID and everything and we weren't allowed to be around COVID patients but it was just very common to see portable chest x-rays it's just insane I think I've seen I'll literally put up here how many chest x-rays I've seen in total for this past year it's insane I've actually probably have seen more and I just forgot to log them on trajectus which I will go over also later in the video when I start talking about clinical so basically chest x-rays just taking an image of the chest when you go over all of this, you'll learn all about the costophrenic angles and how many ribs you should see on a correctly positioned radiograph of the chest and things along that line. Abdomen, very simple also as well. So your probably your more easier chapters are going to be the first two that you learn. Hopefully every school is different, I think, but chest is probably one of the most easiest along with abdomen. After that, I learned about upper extremities and shoulder girdle. The shoulder girdle is basically just made up of your scapula and your clavicle, which you guys will also learn about as well. Upper extremities, fingers, hands, wrist, forearm, elbow, humerus, basically cover it all. You'll have to know the joints of the fingers. You'll have to know this is something I always struggled with, the carpal bones. So when we started covering lower extremities, we went online and I had a really hard time with going online from just being in class to just all of a sudden like yeah you guys were pulling out of clinical COVID's getting too crazy but I only had two days of clinical last semester because of COVID so while you guys are learning about these chapters about the chest the abdomen all of that you're gonna have lab where you get to practice and position the patients we also have lab practicals on every chapter and then at the end of the semester, we have a final on everything that we've covered that semester. When you're going over chest, you get to practice how to position for a chest and how the patient should look and how to position the plate if you want to have it lengthwise or crosswise, depending on how big the patient is and stuff like that. And you guys will also learn about that as well hypersynthetic and asynthetic in patients along that line and what the what that means. Um, I'll throw a picture up actually right here if you want to know what that is. It's just basically how the patient's anatomy is sitting. And then also for patient care, we basically covered all the basics like what is radiology, critical thinking skills, patient interactions, history taking, how to safely handle and move patients, cardiac monitoring, um, vital signs. And that basically covers everything that I learned in my first semester. And I guess it doesn't really seem like a lot, but the chapters are very long and there's a lot of information that you have to know in that short period of time for that one semester. Because we actually were supposed to also cover hip and pelvis which we covered this semester which I'll go into in a couple of seconds but yeah we had to push off a couple of chapters going online like I said previously it made it really hard for us to stay on top of things and so therefore we didn't cover that last semester but we did cover it this past semester so for the spring semester we covered hip and pelvis bony thorax which is like your ribs vertebral column which is your spine and the digestive system which kind of is confusing because it's like what do you mean digestive system we're x-raying bones it doesn't make sense to me so we also actually ended up covering lower extremities again she said she wanted to cover it so i was so glad when she said that because we didn't have a lab practical for lower extremities so i'm really glad this semester that we were able to do that and just to freshen up on it because i honestly we didn't know how to position at all for lower extremities So for lower extremities, you're going to cover your toes, foot, ankle, your tip fib, your knee is a big one, and your femur. For hip and pelvis, obviously your hip and pelvis you're going to cover. Again, you want to know a lot of the bony landmarks, the ASIS, uh, bony thorax for the ribs. That's basically, you're just, it's almost kind of like doing a chest x-ray, but 
Um, it's not totally like doing a chest x-ray. They basically look like chest x-rays, but they're like not. I don't know how to explain it. I really struggled with bony thorax, so I'm definitely going to freshen up over it a lot over the summer. And vertebral column, that's the spine. And you're going to learn all the articulations and all the bony prominences on the vertebral body and digestive system. This is when you give the patient barium. And with the barium, the barium just highlights to show the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, as well as the rectum. And you're going to have to position them in certain ways for certain places that you're looking at. So for patient care, we covered pharmacology, drug administration, contrast media, the introduction to radiopharmaceuticals. We also covered the ethical and legal issue chapters as well, which are the last chapters in the book. So for the spring semester, we also covered physics. We weren't planning on it, but a lot of the second years were struggling with learning all of the chapters in one semester. Literally, you cover like 40 something chapters in one semester for physics. It's insane. So they decided this semester to give us nine chapters from our Bouchon book, which talks about radiologic physics and x-ray production, the x-ray imaging system, the x-ray tube, how it's all set up. We also covered x-ray emission and the x-ray interactions with matter. So that's basically what we covered for physics. I don't want to go too in-depth into it because it's really boring. A lot of people will probably want to click off after I start talking about um, pair production, confidence gathering, and like attenuation and stuff like that. People are going to click off. So we're just going to skip over it and that's basically the topics that we covered um, from our book. Carter and Veal book. That's just basically the computer aspects of radiology and how that all works, like bit depth and the matrix and things along that line. So the last part that a lot of people are very interested in is clinical. So one of the first things that I really wish I knew before going into clinical is being confident in myself. On your first day, you're literally gonna feel like a lost puppy and you're gonna be like, what the heck am I doing? Should I go sit with the tech? Are they gonna be annoyed that I'm sitting with them? And you're gonna have a million thoughts that run through your head. All you have to do is just be confident in yourself. And if you have questions, ask the text because that's what they're there for they're there to help you you will come across texts that like have like li they literally don't want anything to do with students and you have to respect that so try to say as little to them as possible another great thing to know is don't only just get one pair of x-ray markers so you're probably wondering what are x-ray markers if you don't know x-ray markers just identify which side is the right and which side is the left these are my markers um, we have to write an X in front of our initials just so they know that we're students, I guess. I don't know. That's what my professor told us. So these are mine. The right is usually red and the left is usually blue. So I kind of went with that like theme of things. So I got mine off Etsy. I'll link them down below. I think they're really cute. So also my school gave us these. So these are what like the standard x-ray markers look like. Like I said, the right is red, the left is blue and the number is just, these were like to identify that, oh, number 25. Okay, those are Caitlin's numbers. Number 27 is blah, blah, blah's number. So you use these when you're taking an image. Let's say you're doing, it's an AP chest, which just means the chest, the central ray is coming in anteriorly and then exits posteriorly. So AP, anterior, posterior. So what you're going to do is you're going to mark the left side. So you're going to take the marker, you're going to stick it on the board and you're just going to put your little marker over the shoulder. You don't want it in any of the anatomy. You don't want to cut off any anatomy because God forbid if you put it in the anatomy of interest and they miss something, that is not really good. You also have to repeat the image, which happens. Don't ever expect to be perfect because even the text will still mess up. If you mess up, it's okay. You learn from it, you grow from it, and you just keep pushing forward. So another thing, and I actually covered this in one of my videos, I'll link it up here, um, what's in my clinical bag. I'm just gonna cover it right now so you guys know. So I'll bring my lunch or my dinner, depending on if I go for the day or the evening. Bring your markers and bring a spare because this happened to me once. I was doing a shoulder in a stretcher and it like completely went missing in the sheets and we had to literally roll a patient on their side and try to find, it was just a hot mess and my marker ended up being on one of the sponges when we got back to the room. Yeah, so just always make sure that you have extra markers like I said because yeah so I also bring my pocket guide which is just a miniature version of your positioning in procedures book and it's really helpful if you're like confused like okay where do I center for a, a, a PA chest I don't know where to center I can't remember you look through your book it'll say at t7 you're like okay perfect it's great to review also before if you know what's coming in if it's like an order for like an outpatient and it says chest and you're like 
oh god i can't remember how to center for a chest you can look through it and be like okay um i center at t7 and i should see a little um two inches of light above the shoulders and i should use like a 14 by 17. so it's really helpful when you forget how to position for a certain next ray i also bring my n95 and my mask a couple of extra masks because i'm always losing them i don't know what's going to happen with the fall if we still have to wear n95s if we're going to be allowed around covid patients because everything is kind of changing for the fall everything is going to be in person so that's very exciting but i'm not really sure what's going to happen if we do need our n95 still i also very very important bring a little notebook to write my logs in as to what i saw like if i saw a portable chest x-ray on a 58 year old female who is experiencing what is their like chief complaint what's their main complaint um they're experiencing shortness of breath like that's like the most common thing that you'll see chest shortness of breath stuff along that line so i'll write that down and i go online and log it on trajexis i don't know how other schools do it but we use trajexis and we put that in on the computer and so for my school we have to observe assist and demonstrate on the same things i'd have to see a portable chest assist on a portable chest assist the tech and then show the tech like this is how you position for it they check make sure it looks good then they take the image and then i have to do the competency which basically shows if i'm competent enough in my understandings on how to do that sort of x-ray so we basically do it by yourself and Take the image so you log those and then if you get the comp they'll go on to trajexis they'll log in on their end and put in their score usually they'll give you like a 100 or a 90 depending on how well you did i guess um if you like missed certain things or like if the patient's like a little rotated or something like that or if you had to take another image certain things like that so depending on the clinical site i'm at if i have an exam coming up i really like to bring my book to places that allow me to to study especially if it's like if it's a place that you only see like four x-rays a day it's really nice to just have your book and kind of just pass time by as well as learn the information that you need to for your exams and lastly in my like notebook i'll have a list of things that like i'm eligible to comp on if i can comp on a geriatric chest a geriatric lower extremity and a geriatric upper extremity i'll write that out for the text i'll be like hey these are the things that i can comp on today here's the list just in case if you see something so if you would like to come and get me usually if you're at like a place where the texts are really nice they'll come get you or you'll have some places where the texts are not very nice and um literally like will forget you and like not want anything to do with you so also currently for comps if anyone is wondering i'm at like i think 18 or 19 i'll put it up here because i can't remember last semester i only had one and this semester i got like a bunch of them so yeah i'm like halfway there with my comps there's a certain amount that you need i can't remember off the top of my head i'm gonna put the number up here for the number of comps that you need in order to complete your program so that basically covers everything that i have learned in my first year of radiology school it's a lot, but it's definitely, I know, going to be worth it in the end. And if you guys are interested in radiology or you're in your radiology program or you just got accepted, please comment down below because I'd, I'd love to hear you guys' responses and where you guys are at in your program. So that's basically about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe. And if you guys have any other video ideas that you'd like to see me do, comment them down below as well. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. I cannot remember, I cannot remember, uh, five o'clock, while I'm on the shelf, pity. Oh, I don't even know if that's how it goes. Seven o'clock, dinner with myself, I can't cancel that again.